Welcome back to Inside City Hall on this Friday night. Earlier this week, we saw a very heated protest outside a city planning commission hearing. It's all due to the mayor's plans to redevelop a neighborhood in Northeast Queens known as Willits Point. Here to debate this controversial effort is a supporter, the executive vice president of the Queens Chamber of Commerce, Jack Friedman, and one of the biggest opponents, city councilman, Queen City Councilman Hiram Montserrat, welcome to both of you tonight, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, we're looking at a map of the area, and just to describe this so that everyone can follow what we're talking about, basically, this is a 13-block waterfront area bordered by Shea Stadium to the west, Flushing the east, the target of a 3 to $4 billion redevelopment and rezoning urban renewal plan uh, created by the mayor and his administration. Here's the key and the controversy here. It would result in the removal of several recycling centers, junkyards, and 250 small businesses, approximately 70% which are automo auto car related, automobile related, car related. So now, councilman, we're looking at some video of the area. Why, you would imagine on the surface that someone would be supportive of the city pouring in three to four billion dollars. Why are you against this? Well, that's a very interesting point. And the fact of the matter is that I am all for development. I think that it, it, we need a development project in Willis Point. But I think we need to have the right mix and we need to have the right message as a city. And uh, I think that there are still a lot of unresolved issues. Look. The plan is very big on ideas, but very small on details. And I think that's where I have to differ from uh, some elected officials and the mayor's office in particular. We need more details, we need more community input, and we need to ensure that there are protections for those who are currently there. And the reality is, is that we have well over 250 businesses there, 1,700, 1,800 workers. This is an area of our city that generates about a billion dollars a year and tax revenues and jobs. So before we tinker about wiping them all out, we should really take a hard look at what we're putting in and then obviously the issue of eminent domain. Okay, so eminent domain uh, is one of your big issues. Absolutely. Okay, now why do you support this? And then we'll get into specifics. Yeah, it, it's really obvious. Even Councilman Monstrat can't debate the fact that this is a blight on the community and it's helping no one right now. Uh, my concern is we can discuss how much affordable housing there should be, whether there should be 1,100 units or 2,750 units. But if we don't discuss and we kill the plan, we have no units. We can discuss the 5,500 permanent jobs or the 18,000 temporary jobs and whether they should go to Queens-based businesses and minority-owned businesses. But if we don't have the plan, we have, no, we have no jobs to discuss at all. So the councilman is right. It's a very difficult situation. We like more details. But the fact is we've been working on this for a couple of years now. We've been out in the community, reaching out to the community. We've put many, many things together in terms of relocating and redeploying this workforce. And we've talked to the major property owners to find out what the needs are and we're keeping our heads, you know, keeping on top of EDC to make sure they follow through and treat these people fairly. A lot of them are members of my Chamber of Commerce. Well, now, well, well let, let, so that everyone is following us, eminent domain, which means that the city can seize the property, the area, without the permission of the owner. That's very controversial wherever it is used. Uh, people normally say they have a right to whether or not they want to keep their property or sell. But government's point of view is that it should always, the, the, the bigger good in terms of what it does for the community should always be the bottom line.